Hey guys, so we're doing a slightly different video this month because there's been a recent COVID-19 outbreak, meaning it hasn't been possible for us to travel. So what we've been doing instead is really taking this opportunity to focus in on some of our dogs' behavioral and emotional issues. Now I know this is a bit of a change from previous videos, but please bear with us. I really hope you find it interesting because this has been a massive part of our life out here in China. And not only that, um, but it's come to inform how we feel about our responsibility as human beings and our treatment of non-human animals. I also wanted to take this opportunity to introduce the dogs a bit more, give you a bit more information on their background. So first, Momo, uh, we found her in a car park in our community. She was living out of bins and just eating scraps at about six months old. And her health, her physical health was actually pretty good, but her mental health wasn't so good. So she has quite a strong fear of people, motorbikes, um, people coming into our house or into her personal space. So those are some of the big things that we're working on. Chooch was slightly different. She was a stray that was in a village on the outskirts of Chengdu. And unfortunately in some villages, uh, stray dogs are seen as a bit of a pest. So some security guards were trying to kill her uh, when she was rescued by a local animal shelter. She was uh, in quite a bad physical state, very underweight, and it took about a year for her to reach full physical recovery. It is on us as guardians um, to help our dogs who have come into our lives um, address these issues that they're facing because no one else is going to do it. No one else is going to help them be positive canine members of society. So there's two parts to this video. Um, later on we're going to look at separation anxiety but first of all uh, we're going to jump straight into urban anxiety. What it's like for a highly sensitive adopted dog living in a Chinese megacity. Chaotic urban environments can be overwhelming for dogs, causing reactive behaviours such as fixation, stiff body language, lunging and barking. Remember that these are natural involuntary stress responses. Here are some steps we use to help our dogs through them. The first step is management, shortening their walks. This reduces the opportunity to meet their triggers and practice unwanted behaviours. We can increase their walks again when they learn new responses. Enrichment activities are holistically beneficial, giving dogs the opportunity to perform natural canine behaviours such as digging, sniffing and searching within the home. If we are minimising walks, we often have to get a little bit creative in order to meet their species specific needs indoors. Desensitisation and counter conditioning is the final step. It safely exposes our dogs to a stimulus in a controlled way while working to change their emotional responses to it. We're going to share a desensitization and counter conditioning game we like to do with Momo now. It's called Engage, Disengage. So the game involves things like using household objects like umbrellas, boxes, and we've got a sheet. And what we're going to teach Momo to do is to look at a trigger, so something that causes her a little bit of stress, and to look at it and then disengage from it and look back to me. Um, so yeah, we're going to jump right into it and we'll show you how it works. 
Joe's providing a distraction here while being careful not to cause Momo any stress. What I'm doing is verbally praising Momo when she looks at Joe and then giving her a treat reward when she looks back at me. You can increase the duration of the distraction and add movements to gradually make it more challenging. In this activity, Momo is practicing the skill of self-interruption, which is valuable on walks when you're confronted by triggers or perceived threats from every direction. As you can see, Momo is pretty experienced at this, so Joe is happy to throw in some extra shapes and cause a bit of a scene in our community. Okay, so we've just got out of the apartment and we're about to enter the crazy zone where all hell sometimes breaks loose. And basically it's our mission to get through this intense area where there's loads of distractions before getting to the river where it's nice and quiet. Yeah. Here, Tanzan is directing Momo between her body and a hedge, creating a safe passage for her. This is very useful when passing for an area rife with dodgy characters. Say what I do, Trey. Yeah, I think I'm text. Go where I live. Oh, you gon' need a chaperone. Not online, and you're fine. Got the black on. They put the pills up in your city, cause the crack gone. And yo, I still ain't got no back. Here we see a challenging situation for Momo. The man sweeping is a potential trigger, but even more so is the dog. Momo heavily dislikes schnauzers and will engage in a shouting match, so I decide to body block the dog rather than the man sweeping. As you can see, Momo acknowledges the man and then self-interrupts by looking back at me. Then an e-bike comes up behind us, but Momo uses the engage disengage tool again. Big win for Momo. Get your face, all in order, this the technical enforcers, don't you ever take a knee, they gon' plexico it for you, we was never meant to go here, even if we're from the soil, find a nigga that on oil, yeah, I'm young, but I ain't stupid, there be 50 squad cars outside for loud music. Yeah, you got to excuse Chocho because she's got pink eye. <coughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Once we reach the river, we can allow the dogs to decompress in a more natural open space. Decompression walks allow dogs to enact their species-specific behavior of exploring an environment with their noses. This is proven to lower anxiety, heart rate and blood pressure in dogs and we're using a long leash so we can still rein them in if needs be. Okay, how are they looking, Joe? Yeah, pretty good. We're just coming up to the 10 minute mark and they're both lying down, looking chilled out. So this is our, uh, our personal best, PB. And um, we're aiming for 30 minutes today. So if we can get that, that'll be really good. Okay, so I appreciate that might have looked a little bit weird, um, but what you've just seen is um, a snapshot of the past couple of weeks. We've been spending a lot of time out in the hallway uh, checking on the dogs for, on our phones, and this is all part of a training program we've been doing to build up their confidence being left alone. Okay, separation anxiety is a panic disorder where a dog will enter a state of panic when they are left or isolated. Okay, so there's a wide range of behavioural indicators to look out for, but the top three are vocalisation, such as barking or whining when you leave the house, elimination, such as peeing or pooing, um, or destructive behaviour, such as chewing up furniture or uh, tearing little pieces of paper. Okay, so the first and most important thing is never to punish your dog. They cannot help this behaviour, so punishing them will only make it worse. Next, you have three stages. You've got number one, management. Suspend all absences. Do not leave your dog longer than they can handle. Uh, number two, veterinary consultation. You need a vet to make sure that there aren't any underlying health issues that are affecting your dog's discomfort. And finally, um, where all the hard work is, a program of systematic desensitization. We want to give you a snapshot of what the last stage looks like, so systematic desensitisation. So we're going to be gradually exposing the dogs um, to us leaving the house, and we're going to give you a little snapshot of what that looks like. Okay? Ready? I'm ready. Ready.
This is our early morning routine at the moment. Uh, we walk the dogs and then uh, do the whole process of getting them settled and then eat Bowser uh, while we watch them on the camera. So we watch them on the camera on my phone. You can see Chooch is fast asleep. Moment always shows a little bit more tension. Um, so she's lip licking a little bit. Ooh, she's noticed the camera. <laughs> but yeah, we normally stay here for about 10 minutes and then go to work. So it's been an intense couple of weeks doing this training. Um, the girls are doing really well, but we've still got a lot of work to do. We'll be doing this training um, every weekend and doing the urban anxiety training every day. Um, so yeah, this is something uh, that can't be fixed in a couple of weeks. We're looking at months, but they're doing really well so far. Yeah. Okay. All right, have a good day at work, Tams. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.